this country is supposed to stand for, but the black man in this country is supposed to be uh, getting freedom. The country is supposed to be based on that. Uh, democracy, freedom, justice, equality, and all that stuff that they teach us in school. And uh, now, why should the black man have to go to court to get freedom when a white man in this country is free when he's born? Why should the black man need some legislation to prove that he's a human being when you don't need any legislation to prove that whites are human beings? So I make this point because, to come right back to my initial statement at the outset of the program, you will never get real freedom and recognition between black and white people in this country without destroying the country, without destroying the present political system, without destroying the present economic system, without rewriting the entire Constitution. It'll be a complete destruction of everything that America supposedly stands for before a white man in this country will recognize a black man as something on the same level with himself. And this is why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that the best way to solve the problem is complete separation. Let the black man, those of our people in this country who want to, have a country of our own where we can go and stand on our own feet and solve our own problem and not have to continue going to court or waiting for some politician to legislate for another hundred, hundred or two years to prove that we're human beings. Mr. Moderator, I've discussed this with Minister Malcolm before, and uh, after seeing Mississippi and Alabama close up, I'd be glad to give him those states if it were within my power to do so. Yet, as I, I think uh, I've said before, Why Mississippi Minister Malcolm, and as I've said before, Minister Malcolm, the thing that bothers me about your idea of a black nation within a nation, presumably, if it can be affected then, is that if the white man hates us as much as you say he does, what a target that makes as we were all together. All right. His deeds okay, but now let's see. Okay, if he hates us that much, then I would hate to be all gathered in one place. I'd rather be dispersed throughout this nation. He could drop one controlled atom bomb and wipe us out. He could uh, strangle us with a net of... Uh, wiping you out. He could out strangle us. Secretary May, I finish? May I finish? He certainly <laughs> did. But he could strangle us with an economic... Noose around our necks. are strangled already. All right, your own I, gentlemen. I would rather be. I would rather be dispersed, Minister Malcolm, and I think then I would make a poor target. You know, um, uh, if you're all together, one gun can shoot you. Harlem is all together. Washington D.C. is already all right, coming. That is, that Washington D.C. has already become an all-black city. This is why Harlem is being strangled economically. I think now, and this is why this summer, we plan to have task force people, volunteers working in key sections like Harlem, the Bedford-Stuyvesant area, and uh, Newark, New Jersey, to tackle these slums and to organize the tenants for possible rent strikes against the terrible conditions that exist there. Mr. Farmer, this is what I wanted to ask you when you mentioned your July 4th deadline before. What actually is going to take place on July the 5th? Well, I would not say July 5th. Maybe it'll be the evening of July 4th. Or maybe it'll be the morning of July 6th. But for those concerns that uh, parts of chains that have units in the South that are still segregated or South and North fail to employ Negroes without discrimination. There will be nationwide demonstrations in spontaneous in cities all over the country simultaneously. They will demonstrate. There will be sit-ins. There will be an economic boycott. We are now in negotiation with some of these companies, some of these chains, and uh, at least in one case, they have agreed complete desegregation and an end to discrimination in employment. And I hope others will come across by July 4th. If they don't, then we plan to take our necessary action. What do you think will happen? Well, I think that there will be some that won't come across. I think there will be some which will offer token compliance with our demands. And tokenism will not be accepted. We've gotten beyond tokenism now. We demand the whole loaf. We want an open city open states and an open country. We want, in other words, to get this nonsense of race and racism behind us so that we can uh, release the tremendous resources that are being tied up, not only in terms of money, in terms of talent and intelligence and thought to work on the problems of unemployment generally, the problems of disease and health, the other problems that uh, afflict all people in our country. When you say we, and we are going to uh, bring this about, mm -hmm. what do you mean? When I say we, I mean the Congress of Racial Equality and its 70 units throughout the country. 
And what about its connections with other Negro groups? To what extent will there be that unity of action? There is a complete cooperation between the groups, as uh, Reverend Wyatt Walker can tell you. We have worked closely with them and have enjoyed their support, and they have enjoyed our support in their projects. And we expect that that support and cooperation will be a continuing thing. The NAACP is another example of that cooperation. In city after city in North Carolina, we are working closely with the NAACP in a coordinated drive. We expect that there will be full coordination in this campaign for economic boycott. Well, then I would turn to Mr. Walker and ask him, what does he see happening on July 4th or 5th or 6th? Well, certainly, uh, whatever resources we have to put at the disposal of the uh, overall program of the Congress of Racial Equality as far as economic withdrawals, if they are going to withdraw their support from the Kresge chain or the Woolworth chain or the Sears Roebuck chain, uh, we have a moral commitment to cooperate with them, and we would notify our 85 affiliate organizations across the South to cooperate with them in this regard because our goals are exactly the same. Uh, we may uh, differ in timing or methodology at one point or another, but uh, there's uh, very little theoretical or philosophical differences that we share. Uh, we insist that uh, the Negro individually and collectively must have the opportunity uh, as immediately as possible to move into the mainstream of American life without the uh, burden of his high visibility being uh, 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 an unnecessary uh, burden to him. What about economic instruments? Do you think these are the most effective, as Mr. Uh, Palmer was suggesting? Uh, I would agree absolutely. This is the one thing that gives uh, the Negro community leverage. Uh, uh, I suppose in all good businesses, according to the Wall Street Journal, 6% is the margin of... Uh, of profit and the Negro community uh, is the critical margin in America with his income and with his buying power. Just uh, let us suppose what would happen if uh, we proposed to the automotive industry or some member of the automotive industry uh, that this fall, if we can't go to Detroit and look through the offices of General Motors or uh, Ford or somebody else, and we can't find uh, it uh, dotted proportionally with Negroes. Uh, uh, what would happen to the stock market or the automotive industry if all Negroes joined a nationwide uh, effort to, not to buy new cars this fall? The margin of profit is so slim, I think it could have uh, a real effect on the Dow Jones average. Are you going to Detroit this fall to take that, to make that search? We are in the process of making a decision as to whether we will have a national conference in Detroit on uh, a, a nationwide selective buying campaign against some... Uh, major industry that does not practice fair employment. You say that decision still has to be made. What would be the arguments against it? Well, I, as a Negro, I don't know of any arguments against it. It could, with the accelerated thrust of the Negro community, it may be that uh, some other focus might have priority. Uh, you mean some other summer. industry? Some other industry or some other focus. But I gather what you gentlemen are saying that we can expect this year. Uh, to find some kind of massive economic... The year of 63 uh, is going to be a year of decision for America and for the Negro community. There is talk also now, of course, in the papers today, uh, on this day, of a, a massive march upon Washington. Uh, do you feel that this will take place? Uh, uh, if uh, reasonable goals are not reached on the national scene, I think it is highly probable. What do you mean by reasonable? Well, here again, uh, I suppose uh, you might consider this charitable, but uh, some good faith and uh, reasonable efforts and results uh, over this summer, uh, I would say before Congress uh, uh, dismisses. Well, well, let me turn back to Mr. Farmer and ask him what he would consider reasonable. You haven't mentioned marches on Washington, but of course they appear in the, uh, word of them appear, appear in the paper today. Uh, uh, do you think that this is going to achieve anything important for you? Well, I think it might. Uh, the more pressure we can maintain on the situation now, the better it will be. And incidentally, CORE is cooperating in the plans for a march on Washington. We will be participating in it uh, if it is necessary for there to be a march. And by necessary, uh, I mean if uh, there is still discrimination in employment and still um, proportionately two and a half times as many Negroes unemployed in our country as whites then it'll be necessary for us to march on Washington. Oh, we've got to do, I'm sorry, Mr. Walker. We've got to do something about uh, the voting inequities in the South. Uh, I was so dismayed uh, at the program Meet the Press when Governor Wallace says to the nation that Negroes are voting all over Alabama. And I could name almost two dozen counties where a Negro has uh, uh, never voted uh, 
at all. Where there are ten counties where no Negro has been on the registration list. Well, of course. And you've got a twenty-one uh, question uh, form. 